In buildings, there are known architectural styles. If you speak of a style, an architect will immediately know what you mean. An architectural style is often characterized by the features that make a building or other structure notable and historically identifiable. Likewise, there are software architecture styles that can be followed, as well as software architectural patterns, which is what we want to look at today. A software architectural pattern, much like a building's architectural style, imposes a transformation of the design of software. However, a pattern differs from a style in a number of fundamental ways. First, the scope of a pattern is less broad, focusing more on one aspect of the architecture rather than the architecture in its entirety. Two, a pattern imposes a rule on the architecture, describing how the software will handle some aspect of the functionality at the infrastructure level. For example, concurrency. And finally, architectural patterns tend to address specific behavioral issues within the context of the architecture. For example, how real-time applications are going to handle synchronization or interrupts. Patterns can be used in conjunction with an architectural style to shape the overall structure of a system. Let's look at several architectural patterns in software development. First, data-centered. A data store, whether it's a file or a database, is going to reside at the center of this architecture, and it is assessed frequently by other components that will update, add, delete, or otherwise modify data within that data store. Next is data flow architectures. This architecture is applied when input data is to be transformed through a series of computational or manipulative components into output data. One such pattern is called the pipe and filter. It has a series of components called filters connected by pipes that transmit data from one component to the next. Each filter will work independently of those components upstream and downstream. It is designed to expect data in a certain form and produces data output to the next filter in another specified form. However, the filter does not require any knowledge of the working of its neighboring filters. The call and return architectural style enables you to achieve a program structure that is relatively easy to modify and scale. In this style, the program is divided into smaller pieces hierarchically. The main program invokes many of the program components in the hierarchy, and that program components are often divided into subprograms. These architectural styles are only a small subset of those available. Once requirements engineering undercovers the characteristics and constraints of the system to be built, the architectural style and or combination of patterns that best fits those characteristics and constraints can be then chosen. In many cases, more than one pattern might be appropriate, and alternative architectural styles can be designed and evaluated. For example, a layered style, which is appropriate for most systems, can be combined with a data-centered architecture in many of your database applications. There are things you have to consider when you choose an architecture style to use. These are include things like economy, Many software architects suffer from unnecessary complexity driven by the inclusion of unnecessary features or non-functional requirements. This is going to run up your cost to develop, both in monetary cost as well as the time it takes to develop the software. The best software is uncluttered and relies on a certain amount of abstraction to reduce unnecessary detail. Visibility. As the design model is created, architectural decisions and the reasons for them should be obvious to software engineers who examine the model at a later time. 
spacing is a separation of concerns in the design without introducing hidden dependencies. Sufficient spacing leads to modular designs, but too much spacing leads to fragmentation and the loss of visibility. Methods like a domain-driven design can help identify what to separate in the design and what to treat as a single coherent unit. Architectural symmetry implies that a system is consistent and balanced in its attributes. Symmetric designs are easier to understand, comprehend, and even communicate. For example, a customer account object whose life cycle is modeled directly by a software architecture that requires both open and closed methods. Architectural symmetry can be both structural and behavioral. Emergent, self-organized behavior and control are often the key to creating scalable, efficient, and economic software architectures. For example, many real-time software applications are event-driven. The sequence and the duration of the events that define the system's behavior is an emergent quality. It is very difficult to plan for every possible sequence of events. Instead, the system architect should create a flexible system that accommodates this emergent behavior. 